Part 2 of adding lights into a Numicron clock. Now this socket I had to do something a little bit unique with. I actually did a twist and mount and instead of fastening it to the bottom of the cabinet I will be fastening it to this screw because the cabinets of a die cast material that I don't want to take and drill. So in this case I twisted the bracket and then did a 90 degree angle. So it will mount to the screw that holds the adapter plate to the motor which will position the socket in the correct location. I have one more thing that I have to do and that is drill and tap a hole right there where I've marked it and that will complete the modifications. Hopefully, can be seen. Okay. And whenever you're drilling one of these, whether it's die cast or the pressed steel or even the bakelite, you want to be careful that you don't go through and hit the detent clips or any other parts and do any damage. And this should be done before servicing because you get metal filings and stuff all over everything. And then I'm going to take the tap and like the redneck I am I don't have a handle so just carefully turn it with pliers. It's not an automobile engine or anything that accurate, but we want it to look like a factory installation when it's done. Okay, this should be a working thread. I can thread a 632nd screw into the hole. Let's mount the sockets. saw here allows me to know that I'm in the camera's view. Oops, I didn't grab a screwdriver. This kind of work takes a lot of finger dexterity, and mine isn't that good anymore. Now this isn't normally how I mount these. This isn't how Penn would use to mount them, except in very rare cases. But when I'm finished, I'll show you why I had to do it in this case.
Now this clock I'm going to be running neon bulbs, kind of like for darkroom viewing purposes. I usually only really illuminate the ones that look like a TV, because these clocks don't have any kind of bezel or anything to allow the light out, except for right around the numbers. And we bend that and tweak it slightly, and there we go. The sockets are mounted to the clock in the factory configuration. This does take just a bit of practice, and it seems like each one is just a little bit different on getting them fitted and aligned just right. With the neon lamps, once they're in, you almost have to have the bulbs touching the front of the case, just so that enough light can sneak past to hit the front of the dials. When this sets down in here, I may shim this back with two washers a quarter of an inch and then push the bulbs forward so that the light can emit out of the front of it and it'll light up the numbers. The other problem I had with this bracket here is normally I mount them to the bottom of the clock's cabinet. In this case, as you can see, the movement is raised up above the floor of the cabinet, so I couldn't do that. Plus, this being a die-cast material, it really isn't drillable. Very risky to drill. So mounting it to the screw of the movement is a good alternative. And it's about as close to the factory as you can get for the bulbs. From the front of the clock, you'd never know it's been customized in any way. And there we have it. We have illuminated another Numicron. The Numicrons. <laughs>